The first thing that I want to introduce is the concept of the curve. And in Rhino, a curve can be a few things. One, it can be a straight line segment. It can be a series of straight line segments. And then it can also be a Bezier spline, a NURBS curve that looks something like this. For our purposes, we're just going to be working with the curve command. We'll be working with polylines a little bit later. But for this first exercise in creating a site and working with surface geometry to mold topography, we're going to be working with the curve command. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter the curve command. And Rhino is going to prompt me for a start of a curve. You'll notice once I execute that command, there's going to be a point that appears in my window. And that's going to be prompting me for a location for my first point. You'll also notice that this point is kind of constrained to this grid here, and this is known as the construction plane. When we're working in perspective view, it's important to remember that there's always going to be a kind of base plane to work on. That's going to be our reference plane. So there are a couple things that help us orient ourselves with the construction plane. One is this red line. That's the x-axis. So if you're thinking of this in Cartesian coordinates, this is horizontal or x. The green is y or vertical. And then the z-axis, which you don't see, is straight up or down. In any case, Rhino is going to prompt us for a start of our curve point. And there are a couple ways we can input this point. And the easiest way is just to click. Once we click, the command line is going to prompt us for a next point. We can simply click in our viewport again, or we can type in values here. There are a couple drafting aids that you can use. And for this purpose, what we're going to do is we're going to just turn on ortho really quickly. And what ortho does is it constrains your drawing to by default 90 degree increments. You can actually change these increments. You can set it to any increment you want, 15 degree, 30 degree increments. What I did was I enabled ortho at the bottom of the screen here. Just along this y axis, I'm going to make a few clicks. And you'll notice these points are being generated. So I'll create six points. I use six points to define this line, when really I probably only needed a start point and an end point. The reason I put six points is because I'm going to use these curve points, they're called control points, to generate some surface topography. One thing that's important to know about curves is that they are an accumulation of points in space. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this command called points on with my curve selected. And you'll notice that I can now see those points that I had just created. If I select one of these points, I can modify it. So what I'm going to do, this is a feature that's new to Rhino 5, is I'm going to enable this gumball. And what the gumball is, it's a transform widget that helps you modify and transform elements or geometries on the fly. And this is going to be helpful for us because we're going to be doing quick modifications and we don't necessarily need to be inputting everything in our keyboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select one of these points. I'm going to move it up in space and you'll notice that it created this spline curve when I did that. And that's because the curve, as I mentioned, is an interpolation of these points based on spline math. You don't have to worry about what that is. And it's more important to get a intuitive understanding for how splines work. So what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to undo that by hitting Control Z or Command Z on OS X. I'm actually going to make a few copies of this curve. I'm going to select the curve and I can either type in the copy command and simply click a base point and then set a target point. So I'm just going to make a few copies. That's one way to make copies. The other way is with this widget tool, the gumball. I can very easily move this piece of geometry by dragging one of its arrowheads. If I hold down Alt, you can see this little plus sign tooltip appears over my mouse cursor, and I can duplicate and transform the original curve. So I'm just going to make a few of these curves. Let's make six. So now I have six duplicates. I'm not too worried that they're spaced unevenly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these curves to generate a lofted topography. So there are a couple ways to select these things. And this is kind of a simple thing, but it's important to know. The way you select things is by either clicking directly on them, or you can drag windows to select selection windows. If I press my left mouse button and drag from left to right, this is a simple selection box. And what this does is this selects anything that is completely encapsulated by my selection box. So you'll notice that even though my selection box was touching this curve here, it's not going to select it. If I left click and drag from right to left, this is a crossing box. And what this is going to do is this is going to select anything that it touches. So now I'm not encapsulating anything, but my box is touching all of these curves. So it's going to select all of them. If you want to remove elements from your selection, you can hold down control and click, or likewise control and drag to do a crossing box. If you want to add things to a selection, you can hold down shift 
and either click or use selection boxes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the points for all of these curves. I'm going to use the points on command. And that turned on all of my curve points. And what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to just curve by curve, I'm going to go through, select some points, move them up in space, and start crafting some sort of topography. And right now I'm just making this up. We can do, let's move this up a little bit. Let's move these guys up. Let's move all of these guys. And let's move these. So now I have this series of curves. And you can see that all of my points are still on. To turn those off, I can type points, oops, points off, and that'll hide all of my all my curves. Mm -hmm.